Okay, so we look at some group theory, and we're going to look in particular to see if an isomorphism from this group to this group exists. Now here's a list of tools which we can use to look for an isomorphism and also to see if one exists. So in this particular case here, we're going to be looking into cyclic group mapping onto a cyclic group. And then what we want to do is map this group onto this group, but then the order and the properties of this group are, are not uh, taken away. So they still uh, are still there. So in particular, what we're interested in is the identity elements, inverse elements, the order of the subgroups, and more importantly, is the generators, because we're looking into cyclic groups. So for a cyclic group to exist, it must have a generator to generate the whole group. And the actual isomorphism, which we're going to call the letter phi, must be injective and surjective, i.e. it must be one-to-one -one and onto. And then the isomorphism itself, the structure of the mappings, is going to follow this kind of pattern. So when we find the generator, we're going to find the generator to zero, to one, to two, maps onto the generator of the other group to zero, to one, to two. And that way then we keep the structure of the group. Okay, so first of all, let's define the groups. So we're going to call this one group G, and we're going to call this one group M. Okay, so G, this group is integers up to seven under multiplication. So multiplication mod seven, so we're going to have the integers one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, it, one is the identity um, element under multiplication, and because it's mod seven, it only goes up to six. So that's the group there, and zero does not exist in a multiplication modulus group. So that's our six elements of the group G. And now our group M, this time it's under addition modulus six, and the first six uh, integers. So under addition, the identity element is zero. So then we're going to have the next five integers, one, two, three, four, five, because here we're mod six. So that's our group here. Okay, now we're going to find all the generators and the orders of all the subgroups. So for G, it's under multiplication mod seven, Let's start with element one. So multiplying one by one each time. So basically, remember it's uh, G to the K, where K goes from zero to six. So in this case, zero to five. So we've got six elements of so zero to five. So K, G to the zero, G to the one, G to the two, and so on, all the way up to five. So here it's multiplication one to the zero, that is one. And then one to the one is one, one to the two is one. So that's basically this group here produces the subset, which has just got only the identity element in here one. So that's of order one. I'll just put that there. Now we've got two, the element two. So following this pattern, two to the zero, that gives us one. Two to the one gives us two. 2 squared, that gives us 4, 4 squared is 8, modulus 7, that's back to 1. So that's our subset here. So this one is of order 3. Now let's go on to element 3. So 3 to the 0 is 1, 3 to the 1 is 3. Then 3 squared, that's 9, modulus 7 gives it two. Then instead of going three to the power of four, we can then use this one as we're working in modulus arithmetic, we can then just multiply this by three. So two times three is six. And then six times three is 18, modulus seven, that gives us a four. And then four threes are 12, modulus seven gives us a five. So this generates the whole group. So this generates G. 
as in G is our group. Okay, so we found a generator. So let's just go along now and find all the other subgroups. So one thing to be noting here is that these groups are both of order six. So groups of order six. So that is important when finding an isomorphism. If this group was of order something other than six, or this one was something other than six, if they're not of the same uh, order, then we couldn't find an isomorphism. So the groups are of order six. And one other little uh, note we can look at is the order of the subgroups. So order of subgroups. So as the groups are of order six, the subgroups will be of factors of six. So we will have a one, a two, a three and a six. Combinations of that somewhere in the values of these subgroups order. OK, four. So one to four. Four fours are 16, mod seven gives two. Two fours are eight, which gives us back to one. So that's our subgroup here. So that's of order three. So now, element number five. Then again, we start off with one and five. Five fives are 25, that then yields a four. Five fours are 20, which yields a six. Six fives are 30, which yields a two. And five twos are 10, which yields a three. So we found another generator here. So five, the element five generates the group. And our last but not least, number six. So our calculations here are correct. This should yield a group of order two. So one and six we'll put down. And then six sixes are 36, modulus seven gives us one. So true to its word, the theorem there is held. So we've got groups of order 1, 3, G is 6, 3, a 6, and then a 2. OK, now let's have a look at M. So let's have a look at 0, the identity element. Well, keep adding, because this group here is under addition modulus 6. Keep adding 0 to 0. We're only going to get 0. So this is a group of order 1. And I'm expecting the same um, orders of subgroups as we did for this group as it's of order six. So let's see what happens. So one. So starting off from zero, we put zero and one, and then keep adding one, then we're going to generate the group. So this is going to generate our group M. That's two, three, four, five. And then five plus one, is six modulus six back to zero so there we go that's generating the whole group so two so start off with zero and two and then keep adding two modulus six two then yields four four plus two is six modulus six back to zero so that's our group of order three so we've got a, a one a six and a three so it's going to be a two to come in here now so three so 0 and 3, first two elements, 0 plus 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, which yields a 0. So that's our group of order 2. Now we could stop here and produce an isomorphism. Same here, as we found a 1, a 3 and a generator, we could stop there as well. We don't have to keep going down. But it's good to see the subgroups because we can generate more than one isomorphism morphism if we need it. So number four, so zero and four, four plus four is eight, modulus six gives us two, two plus four is six, which then goes back to the zero. So that's our group of order three, and then last is five. So five starts with zero and five, and then add five on five is ten, modulus six gives four, four plus five is nine, which yields a three, and then a two, and then a one. So five will generate the whole group. Okay, now let's have a look into an isomorphism. Let's see what we can do there. Okay, so now we're gonna find some isomorphism. So as we've got two generators in both groups, let's see if we can find two isomorphisms. So isomorphism 
1, which maps G onto M. First of all, I'm going to do the identity elements. So the identity elements here are 1 and 0. So they will always map onto each other. Then the next thing is, I'm going to follow this pattern here, and then the order of the cyclic group, that's uh, a subgroup of the actual main group, I'm going to follow the pattern of that and then fix it onto the corresponding uh, generator of the other group. So here we've got, I'm going to write down all the elements first of the generator here, 1, 3, 2, 6, 4, 5. So these are then going to map on to these in the same order. So this one's easy to do, it's just numerical order up to five. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So that's one isomorphism there. Let's have a look at another one. Mapping G onto M. So this time I'm going to use this generator here. So this time my elements are one, five, four, noting the identity first, and then six, two, three. So one will always map to the zero, that's the identity element of this group. So now we can map it onto this same generator here if we wish. So now zero, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so here we've mapped three to one, here three has gone to five. Six to three, here six has also gone to three. 2 to 2 and 4 has gone to 2. Now you'll notice here 2 to 2 you see both of these are of order 3. So these are of order 3. 3 onto 1. 3 is a generator. 1 is a generator. So there's a generator. Identity element at the top. Now look at 6 and 3. So 6 is of order 2, and 3 is of also order 2. So these are of the same order. So now this is the pattern what you're going to see in your isomorphism. 4 mapping onto 4, so that's of order 3 and of order 3. So these isomorphisms are going to be of the same order. So 5 onto 5, 2 generators. Okay, and then you do check these, you'll get the same result. Now what about if we put this generator first? See if we get an isomorphism that's going to be similar. So let's just try and squeeze that in here somehow. So that's our first isomorphism set here. Now let's try phi of 3, G, map it onto M. Let's see if we can just squeeze that in and see what result we get. So 154623. 154623. Now what are they going to map onto here? So if you map it onto this, so zeros first, obviously, and then in numerical order. Sorry, not onto this one. Let's map it onto this one. Sorry, map it onto this one. Zero, five, four, three, two, one. So here we've got five onto five, four onto four, six onto three, two onto two, and three onto one. So this has generated the same isomorphism as this one, even though we've just switched the generators around a little bit. And just to show you isomorphism four, Let's just see if I can just squeeze that in here. G onto M. A little bit rude, we can do that. So we use this generator here. And what we've got is our isomorphism 1 is the same as isomorphism 3. And isomorphism 2 is the same as our isomorphism 4. Okay, so what we can say is that G, our group G, 
is isomorphic to M. And we've proved that with two different isomorphisms. Okay.